जय हिंद चिल्ड्रेन माई सेल्फ आर डी गुप्ता एंड आई विल टेक योर केमिस्ट्री एंड बायोलॉजी क्लास टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक द केमिस्ट्री क्लास चिल्ड्रेन रिमेंबर दैट बिफोर द समर वेकेशन वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड आवर फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ द केमिस्ट्री दैट इज एनिमल फाइबर वी ऑल्सो हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑल द एक्सरसाइज एंड द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द चैप्टर ना टूडे I am going to revise again the same chapter that is animal fiber. So, for revising the chapter, I am going to share my screen. Now, the chapter animal fibers have certain contents. As the first one is introduction. After that, the relationship of our clothes. with our climate third one is the various types of fibers on the basis of the sources from where they obtain after that the two animal fibers that is wool and silk and at last we will discuss in detail about the health conditions of workers those who are working in wool and silk industry so come to the first before many years when human beings don't have any idea or knowledge about the fibers or the cloths they use leaves of trees bark of trees and skins of animals to cover their body but as the time passes they learn the art of weaving and started making their cloths the cloths protects us against heat cold rain dust and insects the cloths which we used to wear it should be clean and comfortable because the dirty cloths usually stink breed germs and cause skin diseases just like our cloths our socks and shoes also protects our feet from germs cold and heat and cuts and blisters that is why our shoes should fit well and be comfortable we should not wear wet socks or wet shoes because they can cause the skin irritation now the cloths we used to wear it's related to the season or climatic condition Uh, we can say that we wear clothes depending on the climates that is why in summer season we wear loose light colored cotton clothes because the cotton clothes allows air to circulate freely and so the heat of the body escapes white cotton clothes also reflect heat and keep the body cool and they absorb sweat and also pre prevents skin irritation in winter season we wear thick dark colored cloths which are made up of wool fur or leather they prevent our body heat from escaping the dark colored cloths also absorb and keep the body warm and during the rainy season we usually wear cotton cloths we also use rain coats umbrellas and gum boots to keep dry when we go out in the rain now the fibers which are used to make the cloths are of different types on the basis of the sources from where they are obtained so mainly there are two types of fibers the first one is the natural fiber and the second one is the synthetic fiber the natural fibers are those fibers which are obtained from natural sources such as plants and animals whereas the synthetic fibers are those fibers which are made from certain chemicals by human beings that is why 
synthetic fibers are also known as man-made fibers. Synthetic fibers are simply the nylon and polyester. And children, we will discuss in detail about the synthetic fiber in our next class. Now, the natural fibers again are two types on the basis of the sources from where they obtained. And the first one is the plant fiber. The plant fibers are the fibers which we obtain from plants like cotton, jute, flax, hemp, etc. Out of these all plant fibers, the cotton is the most widely used of all textile fibers. The base of plant fiber is cellulose, which is the material used by nature as a structural material in the plant world. You can see that cellulose is the material by which the plant fibers are made up of. And the second one is the animal fibers. Simply the animal fibers are obtained from certain animals. And wool and silk are the two common examples of animal fibers. Wool comes mainly from flesh of sheep. The flesh that means hairs. And we get wool also from goat, yak, camel and rabbit. And together, these all animals are known as wool-yielding animals. And the silk is produced by cocoon-spinning silkworms. Just remember that animal fibers are made up of proteins, which is the complex compound that forms a major part of bodies of all animals. So you can differentiate as the plant fibers and animal fibers that the plant fibers are made up of cellulose whereas the animal fibers are made up of proteins. Now, the wool fibers. The wool fibers comes mainly from the flesh or hair of sheep and also from other old yielding animals. The hair on the body of these animals trap a lot of air because they have the large air spaces between the fibers and they trap more air and while trapping the air by these fibers they make a thick layer of the air above body and this layer of the air act as an insulator and it does not allow to scare the body heat. The flesh of a ship consists of two types of fibers. The first is coarse beard hair and the second is fine and soft under hair that grows close to the skin. The under hair provides the fiber for making wool. Now children remember that the scientists who breed sheep have developed varieties of sheep that only have soft under hair and such sheep give not only better quality of wool but the yield per sheep is also higher. Now there are different types of wool fibers on the basis of the animals from which they are obtained. And the first very common wool fiber is the sheep wool fiber. So the sheep wool fibers are obtained from different varieties of sheep. Children, you must have to know that in our country, the different breeds of sheep are reared in different part of our country. And some of the common breed of sheep are Lohi breed, Nali breed, Bhakarwal breed, Marwadi breed and Patanwadi breed of sheep. These all breed of sheep provides the different qualities of wool. Like the Lohi breed of sheep provides us the good quality of wool which is used 
to make the olin cloths nadi breed of sheep they provide the carpet wool because it is rough so that is why it is mainly used to make the carpets bhakar wool breed of sheep provides the wool which is used to make the woolen shawls because the fibers are long in size marwadi breed of sheep they provide the coarse wool and that is why they are simply used to make the carpets blankets etc and the patanwadi breed of sheep provide the soft and short size of fiber and that is why it is used to make the hosiery cloth now the second type of wool fiber is the animals of camel family these animals belongs to the camel family because they have certain common characteristics and the animals are alpaca llama and camels and the hairs of these animals are also used to make the wool yarns now the next one is the kashmiri wool fiber the kashmiri wool fiber is an extremely soft resilient and easy to dye fiber this is rare and expensive fiber it is combed once in a year from the bellies of the kashmiri and other goats which is found only in the mountains of china and tibet the next kind of wool fiber is the angora wool fiber the angora is formed from the angora rabbit it is an extremely soft fluffy and warm fiber the next is mohair wool fiber this fiber spun from the flesh of the angora goat it is extremely lightweight the angora goat is found in hilly regions such as jammu and kashmir now here students you must have to remember that the name of the fibers and the name of the animals from where they obtained as the angora wool fiber obtained from angora rabbit whereas the mohair wool fiber obtained from angora goat so don't get confused now the last kind of fiber is the yak wool fiber which is obtained from the yak and it is popular in tibet and ladakh now as nowadays the wool industry is a demanding industry because it provides a large scale of wool fibers which is mainly used to make the woolen cloths so there are certain steps involved to make the wool fiber from the hair of the wool yielding animals and the first step is rearing rearing is simply a process in which the breeding feeding and caring of wool yielding animals sheep are reared mainly for wool they are mainly reared in areas with low rainfall in our country they are mainly reared in hills of jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttarakhand arunachal pradesh and sikkim sheep have a life span of about 10 to 12 years they eat grass and leaves the reared sheep are also fed on a mixture of pulses corn jowar oil cakes and minerals in winters they are kept indoors and fed on dry fodder leaves and grains now the second step which are involved in wool industry is shearing we can define simply the shearing as the removal of the hair from the sheep is known as shearing once a sheep develop 
a thick coat of hair it is saved off for getting wool the removal of wool from a sheep is called shearing it can be done manually with a large razor or with a shearing machine shearing is usually done during the hot season you must have to know the reason here today why the shearing done in hot season not in the cold season so the reason is as the hairs of the sheep increases in size so in hot season these hairs create a problem and make the sheep uncomfortable so that is why the hairs get sheared in hot season and when again the winters come these hairs get grow and sheep feel comfortable during the winter season with long hairs on the body so that is why the shearing process occurs mainly in hot season now the third step which are involved to obtain wool from hair is scouring we can define simply this scouring is the process of removal of dust dirt and grease from sheared hair by soap solution the sheared hair is moved tubs which are filled with soapy water to remove dust dirt and grease and that is why it is known as scouring and then these hairs passed to a series of rollers and dryers to make them straight and dry now after the scouring process the next process which are involved in wool industry is sorting in sorting process the hairs of the animals are separated on the basis of the texture as the length shine softness etc and after separating or sorting the next step is removing burrs the burrs are soft fluffy fibers in wool which is just similar to those that often appears on sweater and these are removed manually now after removing burr the next step is dyeing the natural hair of sheep is white brown or black in color it is dyed in different colors as per the demand of the market now after dyeing or coloring the wool fibers the next step is making yarns now these fibers are ready to make yarns here the fiber is straightened first by passing through rollers after that they get combed to separate each and every fibers and then they get spun into yarns so the three other steps are involved here straightening combing and spinning after spinning the wool is either woven or knitted now students the weaving and knitting are the two different process to make the cloths the difference is in weaving process the one set uh, sorry the more than one set i can say that the two sets are used to make the cloth whereas in knitting process the single set of yarn are used to make the cloths now the longer fibers are generally knitted into wool for sweaters and the shorter fibers are woven into wool and cloths now the quality of wools varies from one breed of sheep to another breed of sheep and the quality is decided on the basis of thickness of the fibers length of the fibers shine of the fibers strength of the fibers and the color of the fibers now this is all about 
the wool fibers and the different steps which are involved in wool industry. Now students, here you must have to remember the name of the fibers and the animals from which they are obtained because sometimes it creates a little confusion about the name of animals and the name of fibers. Now come to the second animal fiber that is silk fiber. The silk yarn is made from the thread like filament that is silk worm spins around itself to form its cocoon. It is a highly prized fiber because of its natural lustrous appearance. Silk does not conduct heat and is therefore a good insulator, keeping a person warm in winter and cool in summer. That is why the silk cloths can be used in any season, either in winter season or in summer season. Now, the silk, as we told that, obtained from the silk moth. So, the silk moth is an insect which provides the silk fibers. So, we must have to know about the silk moth in detail. So, here I have the life cycle of a silk moth, which will give the information about how we obtain the silk fibers from the silk moth. The female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time and when the eggs hatch, any caterpillar crawls out. This is the silk worm or larva. The silk worm feeds on leaves and grows in size. When it is ready to enter the next stage in its life cycle, it first weaves a net to hold itself. It then secretes a fiber made of protein, which hardens on exposure to air and this is the silk fiber. It covers itself completely with this fiber to form a cocoon. So, you can see in the diagram that the white ball-like structure is actually the cocoon. And inside this cocoon, the caterpillar is going to change its body shape and going to enter in the third stage of the life, that is pupa stage. And when the pupa made, it converts into the baby moth. And this cocoon gets hardened when it comes in contact with air and light. The pupa grows and changes inside the cocoon. And after a few weeks, the cocoon opens and an adult moth comes out. So, these are the different stages in the life cycle of a silk moth. The first one is egg, second stage is larva, third stage is pupa and the fourth stage is adult stage. Now, the sericulture. Sericulture actually a practice which involves the breeding and management of silk worm for the production of silk. So, we will discuss in detail about the silk culture. The different types of silk with different textures are obtained from different varieties of silk moths. As we have discussed in wool, there are different varieties of silk who provide the different qualities of wool fibers. Just like that, there are different varieties or breed of silk moths are also there and they provide the different varieties of or different types of silk fibers and some of the common silk fibers are tasser silk, moga silk 
and osa silk they are the three different types of silk which are produced from the cocoons of the different types of silk moths and the most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth the silk fiber which are obtained from this moth is of very good quality now in sericulture practice a female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time and these eggs are warmed to a temperature suitable for hatching and this is known as incubation so the sericulture involves the different steps and the first step is incubation in this step the eggs gets collected and warmed properly to provide a suitable temperature which is necessary for hatching of the eggs after hatching the silk worms are fed on freshly chopped mulberry leaves for 6 week the worms eat almost continuously and increase in size at the end of this period they are ready to spin their cocoons and the branches of trees or shrubs are placed in their rearing houses the worms climb these branches and make their cocoons out of one continuous thread taking about 8 days for the process and this process is called spinning of the cocoons the amount of usable silk in each cocoon is small and about 5500 silk worms are required to produce 1 kg of raw silk now children must know the meaning of raw silk the raw silk is the silk fiber which we obtain from the cocoon which are not colorful and not used to make the cloths these raws raw silk get dyed in different colors and the yarns are made and then they are used to make the silk cloths so that time it is known as raw silk now after all the cocoons have been gathered the initial step in silk manufacture is to kill the insects inside them thus the cocoons are first boiled or treated in ovens killing the insects by heat the silk fiber is obtained from the cocoon by delicate process and it is known as reeling or filiage it is the third step which are involved in sericulture industry now the cocoons are first heated in boiling water to dissolve the gummy substance that holds the cocoon filaments in place and after this heating the filaments from 4 to 8 cocoons are joined and twisted and this is then combined with a number of other similarly twisted filaments to make a thread that is wound on a reel and the resulting thread is now known as ras it is woven into raw cloths by the weavers now at last here is some health conditions of workers in the wool and silk industry workers who are employed in almost all processes of the sericulture industry and wool industry are adversely affected by a number of diseases and the first disease is shortest disease this disease is caused by a bacteria and the name of the bacteria is anthrax bacteria 
the people who are working in wool industry they get infected by this bacteria and after infection it leads to a fatal blood disease which is known as sorter's disease the second disease is the respiratory diseases the inhalation of vapors arising from cocoons undergoing steaming cooking and reeling they produces breathing problems asthma and other bronchial ailments and because of that most of the workers suffer from respiratory problems those who are working in sericulture industry now the third disease is scabies and other skin infections the first step in reeling is the boiling of cocoons in water to kill the worms as a result of constant dipping in boiling water the skin of the workers becomes raw and blistered and resulting in peeling of the skin of hands and feet and this disease is known as scabies disease now at last i want to discuss also the differences between the natural fibers that is wool and silk and the synthetic fibers how we can find out that the cloths which are made up of the natural silk or wool fibers are the synthetic fibers so there are certain observations that we can take by heating these fibers if we heat the silk fibers so it will burns with flame if we heat the wool fiber it will also burn with a flame and if we heat the synthetic fibers it will not burns with a flame it will melts like the plastic on the basis of this smell we can also differentiate these fibers like while heating the silk there is no any strong odor produced and while heating the wool it will produce the smell like the burning hair and the synthetic fibers they produce the strong smell while heating and the third criteria to differentiate them is residue which left after burning or heating when the silk fiber heated or burns they form the dull black residue at last and the wool fibers produce the hollow beads which crushes easily to powder whereas the synthetic fibers forms the dark hard beads at last after the heating so this one is the complete division of the chapter and i hope that you don't have any doubt in the chapter now children in next class we will start our second chapter that is structure of matter so please be ready for that and read the chapter in advance that uh, structure of matter so you can easily understood about the chapter at the time of explanation thank you and have a nice day